All right, hey guys, today we're doing a new video in Adobe After Effects, and this is gonna be a tutorial on how to do shakes. And the way that we're doing it is using expression and using the expression editor. What's really nice about this is you can do it in a null, a null object, and then have it control a shake for every single project at every single time you need a shake. So you don't have to redo it, don't have to redo the keyframes or anything like that. It's really, really nice, easy, customizable. So I'll be going over that today and we're just gonna start off with a new composition. I'm gonna call this shake and I'll try to go through the tutorial relatively quickly because it doesn't take too long to set this up. So the first thing we need is our footage. So let me just grab an old AMV and drop that into our project. And let me just scale this up. So when you are working in After Effects and you want to use a transition, I mean you want to use a shake, usually you're going to do it between transitions so it makes the transition look smoother and it's also really nice when there's a beat. So for example, there's a good point around here where we have a bit of time to work with. So right around here, I'm going to cut the footage so we have this transition to work with right here. So this is the transition we'll be working with today and I'll be showing you how to add a shake to it to make it look really nice. So really quickly, I'm just gonna turn on the volume here. So hopefully it's not too loud. And you can hear that. You can hear that beat right here. So right, right here, there's a beat and we're gonna add a shake and it's gonna look really nice. So yeah, that's what we'll be doing today. And again, we will be using expressions. So the first thing we're gonna do is go up into layer select new and you're going to go into null object so this is going to be our control so really quickly i'm just going to call this our control and with this null object we need two slider controls so go into your effects and presets type in slider and then just drag and drop that into your control or null object so we're going to need two of these one is going to control the frequency and the other will control the amplitude so once you have two of those in your null object, uh, before we do anything, we're just going to pick whip this to control. So whatever we change in control will now have an effect on the footage. So if I move the position in the null object, it now moves the position of the clip. So once we have that set up, we do need to select our null object and hit P on your keyboard to open up position. And this is the stopwatch right here. So Pressing in holding alt on your keyboard, you're going to select this stopwatch and open up the expression editor. So once this is open, uh, just delete whatever text is in there and type in wiggle. And once you have typed in wiggle, throw in an open bracket, so shift 9. And now make sure you select this pick whip right here. I'm going to select and drag it to the first slider, so just like that. And we're going to get this expression right here. Now you're going to hit the comma button, so we're just going to throw a comma like that. And we're going to do the exact same thing, so select the pick whip, and now move it to the second slider. So once you have this, we need one more bracket, our closing bracket, so shift to zero, throw in our closing bracket, and you should have this expression right here. And basically this allows us to input values right here, which would then get replaced into here, in the wiggle expression. So I'm just going to click off of that so our expression is set and now you'll notice that if we drag up these values so the first one I said before is going to be our frequency so if I drag this up and this one is going to be our amplitude and drag this up you'll see that the clip now has a shake on it so just like that we were able to do the shake and this is selected for this clip so all the way through this clip will have the shake applied What's really nice is you can pre-compose everything into one sort of uh, collection and when everything is pre-composed then you can use this control wherever you need a transition uh, or a shake for a transition. So we have set this up. Uh, what's really nice about this is you can do slow and fast shakes because we have a pretty hard, hard beat we're going to go with a pretty heavy shake. So I'm just going to crank up the amplitude so you see it jumps off right here. 
and your amplitude most of the time will be higher than your frequency. Let's set frequency to like 6 and take a look at how it looks. So again, if it looks really violent right now, it's only going to be showing up uh, at the point of the transition and then the shake will fade off. So this is looking pretty good. So there are a couple ways to keyframe this to have the shake transition actually look proper. So the best way to do it, I think, is just set keyframes for amplitude first and hit U on your keyboard so you can check out the keyframe. <clears throat> Oops, and our first keyframe should be right at the middle of the transition. So we want that right there, right at the height of where the shaking should start. And then go right to the beginning, set your keyframe to zero, and about equal distance from the first to the second. We want from the second to the third, and we want this to be set to zero. And if you preview through, you see we have the general idea behind the shake. So we have it shaking with a low amplitude at the beginning, and then it gets heavier and heavier and heavier, right at where the transition takes place and then it starts falling off until we hit this point. So once you have that, we're going to select all of them, right click, keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. And we're going to go into our graph editor and I'm just going to select this so it zooms into our graph. And how I want this to graph out is I want it to go slowly. So I want it to slowly then start picking up speed, picking up speed. And I'm just going to move this over here. so. We have a nice little curve right here and then because this is mapped out like this we want this to be mapped out on the opposite side but the same way so it's nice and smooth so we're gonna have these two match and we're gonna have these two match so this needs to be dragged out so the curve should look relatively the same and you'll see that it's nice and flowing so you know it's gonna be a good graph and now you can see this shake as it goes through. So that's looking pretty good. The one thing that really sells shakes is having motion blur enabled. So you're going to select motion blur on your clip just like that. And then make sure this motion blur is also selected right here. So now when we preview through it's going to add a little bit of motion blur based on our movement. And that's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good now. The final thing that you could add in case you wanted it to look really, really nice is just a quick blur. So let me just find fast blur. Drag and drop that into your clip. And once you have that dragged in, hit U on your key. Oops, we need to set a keyframe. So we're going to keyframe blurriness at the beginning. And at the same points as, uh, as these keyframes, we want our blur. Let's see how much blur we want. So two is looking pretty good. Maybe we'll go up to three. Uh, three's a little blur. Okay, we'll leave it at three. Three's looks, three looks pretty good. I'm going to set it back to zero. And again, we want this map the same way. Again, this is optional, but it's just going to make your shake look even better for your transition. So we're going to keyframe this. doesn't have to be exact, but just similar to how we keyframed the last one. Like so. So because we have that all set up, if I preview through, you're going to see that the shake is now added and it looks pretty good. So I'm going to quickly turn on the volume so you can check, so you can see how it sounds with uh, the shake. Oops. <clears throat> so you can see that it sounds pretty good because we have that beat drop. And then as soon as we have that beat drop, we have that heavy shake, which matches it pretty nicely. So that's uh, basically how you're going to do shakes with a uh, control expression. And what's really nice about this is, again, if you have any other clip, you can reuse the exact same sliders in the exact same null object. And you guys can play around with this. You can also keyframe frequency if you want, but the main thing you're going to be keyframing is your amplitude. I think we went over the basics of shakes and you guys can explore and play around with it some more. Thank you all for watching the video and make sure to like and subscribe. Alright, so before I hop off, one thing I forgot to mention in the main video was that when you're working with shakes, 
your footage will be moving around and if your amplitude is high you're going to see black black spaces on your video which doesn't look too nice so in order to fix that if you ever see these black uh, so you might see a little bit here let's see you might see a little bit of uh, dark space here and that's because the footage has been moved so much up that you're starting to see what's behind the footage so in order to fix that, just make sure you select motion tile from your effects and presets, drag and drop it into your footage, and then once you have that dragged in, pull up your output height and your output width and select mirror edges. And that's just going to make sure it looks a lot, a lot better and you're not going to see any of those dark spaces. So uh, that's all and I hope you guys enjoyed the video.